There's one thing all of us here have in common today, and that is suffering. Every single person in this room, whatever background or social status, whichever path your life has taken, we all understand what suffering is. It's normal to suffer. We've all suffered in our past. It might have been the time when your sibling took your toy as a child, or perhaps when you were walking to work in the rain and a car driving by splashed you. Maybe you've missed the last train home. Suffering comes in many spectrums and many multitudes. Suffering doesn't discriminate, and that's the real beauty of it. In embracing my own suffering, if I had the opportunity to go back in time, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't do anything about it. My suffering shaped me and developed me into the person I am today. And from coming to the world with an early struggle of losing my biological mother, having no father figure to hand, I was adopted and I had to move around various homes in multiple countries. Each time hoping I'd find a place I could call home. I was forced to integrate into strange foreign schooling systems, forced to try and make my way in unfamiliar, sometimes unfriendly cultures. Despite the early stage of suffering, I managed. I learned to cope. I came to understand that coping was a great skill, maybe the greatest of skills. During this stage, my future was always a worry. I didn't understand where my conventional start in life would lead me to. But I always knew that I had to wear a mask of strength because one of the hardest things for me as a child was going to school after summer holidays. My peers would brag about their trip to Disneyland that summer and another holiday abroad with their family. When the question came to me, it was always a tough one to face. I never had the opportunity to take that kind of trip, but I always knew during those awkward classroom moments that I was in my own unique path. My own journey, as I spent those same summer holidays glued to my computer screen at home, watching YouTube video tutorials and connecting with online communities to learn new things. It's surreal in a way for me to even be standing here today because I used to just watch these TED Talks on YouTube and I'm now here talking to all of you. I definitely don't regret that today at all. I recognized during those moments was my hunger, my starvation for a better life. A life where I could talk about my summer holidays in front of the classroom of my peers and share all the great experiences I've had. The starvation essentially led me to the thought of wealth and I had to realize that I wanted to create wealth in order to build a better life. I began charging for creative and marketing related services on the internet from about the age of 12, generating revenue whilst in school. I used to also get in trouble after coming back home from school for being on the internet for too long and the Wi-Fi would get turned off at home. I'm sure I wouldn't go back in time now and, and change that because it made me who I am today. During this stage, I recognized it became a brand, a walking business. I would have to differentiate myself in the way I do things. This meant more suffering and sacrifices but fast forward to today, here I stand, age 22, traveling the world at my own expense, working with the world's largest brands by giving my judgment on current and future products of their ecosystems, and even supporting them with new innovative content formats, new methods that can target their relevant audiences and communities in the digital space. I've helped generate these brands as much as seven figures in revenue. A recent example is a sports media company I've helped set up with a friend I met across the internet when I was around age 14. Together, we've been able to grow a sports media brand with hundreds of thousands of subscribers globally and tens of millions of monthly views. It's been eyed up by some of the largest shark tanks in the sports business world. But it's a funny story because they never really understand what we do and how we do it, because to them, it just seems like a bunch of kids on the internet. And despite that, I'm now in a space where I'm creating my own path and shaping new paradigms in the industry. Without suffering, none of this would have been possible and I had to recognize early on that I, had to, I stood out, that I didn't fit in, but through the grace of God and the universe, I've been able to channel my struggles into success, but there's still so much more to achieve because when you're running a business, the moment you stop evolving is the moment you go extinct. Through all these experiences, I've come to realize taking care of myself happened to be the same as if I was building a business or a brand. In businesses and life, it's all about relationships. Being partners in a business, is still kind of being a partner in a relationship. This is the same principle I've come to recognize with life and the art of taking responsibility. We all ponder so much about things such as fake friends and relationships that we post all sorts of indirect social media posts about how we're feeling about them. But it's rare that we take accountability in addressing these issues directly, right? Or maybe it's just a Gen Z thing. In business, accountability means keeping an eye on your expenditures. If they're too high, you need to change that. If you're investing in projects which aren't generating value, you need to be brutal. Stop it. Don't ponder over it. Cut that cost. It's all about brand building. What's your brand? Are you always on message? Are you always out there making claims? Are you doing deals? 
when in reality your home office is a shambles. It's cliche, but maybe if you can't get your own room in order, it's certain you won't be able to get your business life in order. It's difficult to make big effective changes on the outside if a constant disarray on the inside. Being self-taught at what I do, I was able to produce quite a lot with very little input. You might say I was blessed with necessity, but I wouldn't have gone anywhere feeling sorry for myself. I think the conversations we're having right now about mental health and society are great. We've come to normalize the terms such as it's okay not to be okay. However, what we fail to recognize is that there is no accountability within that term. And that's where we need to take responsibility and encourage others to take action. Those who struggle are in their own way blessed. It strikes me time and again that the most troubled individuals are those who go out to make history. Sure, you can talk about the likes of Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali, but I'm also talking about every unsung soul out there coping with unfilmable hardship, but always rising above it. Never letting their smile falter, never letting their mask slip, which is similar to the example of the business owner who got struck by the consequences of the pandemic and had to adjust their methods of operating their business when waves struck and they never ran away. We must face our demons. If we're deficient and defective for our own struggles, then so be it. These defects don't make us weak. They make us special. They make us strong. They make us human. They make us storytellers. We're all individual living brands of our own. One of my first businesses about age 18 was a huge flop. I had high hopes for it. It was a little cafe in the middle of Cardiff next to the castle. And yes, I've not always just been a digital entrepreneur. Sometimes you have to get your hands dirty in, real, in real life. I had no clue about coffee, but I taught myself a lot and the place did, still did okay until it became clear to me that I'd gone into a partnership with the wrong people. Put it this way, they're my friends, but it was just the wrong relationship. And you could look at this from like a real life standpoint and in a relationship, just in a relationship alone, maybe one of you is in it for the long haul, but the other is just in it for a quick buck. But failure kept me on my toes. I've never gotten comfortable in my life or in my business ventures. Accountability kept me clear-eyed, clear-eyed enough to know when it was time to shut shop. Even though my partners were my friends, even though I learned how to make the perfect cappuccino, I figured out by myself what to do when the roof started leaking. A wise man once told me, comfort is the enemy of innovation. The motivation I somehow find within myself to keep learning, to keep striving, when it was just me and a computer that was priceless. And just as in business, you train your team, right? A well-trained team means you're prepared for anything in the world. A well-trained mind is pretty much the same. You just have to take the first step yourself and start taking accountability. Embrace your struggles. Success is a slippery concept. Many of the most interesting people I've met aren't doing conventionally associated with success jobs. Scrubbing floors, cleaning toilets, and this justifies why some of the wisest people are sweeping our streets. A lot of people who have conventional backgrounds or wealth have had the wrong mindset. Maybe they didn't give anything back or they're not taking care of their inner life. Maybe that's simple as their diet or the way they carry themselves. I often think to myself, a dose of necessity might do well for some of these people to bring it all together. I'd say real wisdom is about learning to love the process the process of doing business, the process of life. I set myself some financial goals a few years ago and I managed to achieve them. But when I achieved them, then I suddenly thought to myself, but well, what now? It was a strange feeling and I realized the best thing about success is the process of making it happen. Like in business, like in life, things won't always go well. You'll suffer again, but that suffering could go well, be the springboard you needed all along. I'm Zach Ahmed and thank you for listening to my talk.